you can see that I'm starting off in the Microsoft 365 portal here because Microsoft Teams is one of your Microsoft 365 apps. Now, if you're not familiar with this portal, I bet you are familiar nevertheless with using Outlook through a web browser. And if that does look familiar to you, then look, click the little waffle button up at the top left hand corner there. That's where you get to your other Microsoft 365 apps, including Microsoft Teams. So wherever you are in the Microsoft 365 portal, just click the waffle and you can get to Microsoft Teams. Now, the reason why I am starting here is because we made quite a thing about saying this skill is all about the new Teams. And as I start the Teams app through the portal, it's going to tell me your org is switching to the new Teams and it's ready for you to see. So this classic versus new even applies to the web based interface, you know, to the browser based version of the app. So I'm going to say to myself, yes, I'm happy to switch to the new Teams. So let me switch now to the new Teams. It's going to load that through the browser. Now, what we will see shortly is that you can use Microsoft Teams either through the browser or through the desktop app. It is very much your choice. And in a second, you will see that it does look extraordinarily similar. So this is the new Teams through the browser. Hold that thought for a second. What I'm going to do down on the taskbar, I've got an old shortcut here to Microsoft Teams. Now that happens to be an old shortcut to the classic Microsoft Teams, but look what happens when I click it. As I do that to open the desktop application, it says, ah, oh, you've been using the new Teams. Do you want to switch back to the classic one? No, <laughs> I'm going to keep using the new Teams. Thank you very much. Now, I do appreciate that by the time you get to use the new Teams experience, it might not be that new. <laughs> so you might not get this discussion about classic versus new. But I just wanted to prove the point to you that this is how Teams is going to look through the desktop application. And if I just switch back to the browser just here, particularly if I hide the tabs, well, you'll see that it does look extraordinarily similar. That's through the browser. That's through the app. It really is very, very similar. I have no problem if in real life you end up preferring to use it through the browser, but just be aware that throughout the rest of these skills, I will be using the app based experience rather than the browser. So down the left hand side, you would have spotted, I'm sure, this navigation bar, which will enable you to go to the different parts of Microsoft Teams. So whether it's looking at your chats or your calendar or making calls and whatnot. And you might have some other things shown along here as well, depending on what your organization has set up. So you can see here there's the opportunity for you or your IT folks to actually add other apps to that bar. But we're going to be focusing on the most obvious parts of Microsoft Teams, starting with the Teams <laughs> bit of Teams. So let's talk about the structure of teams and channels. Now, the idea is a team is a group of people who gather to get something done in your organization. So that might be a department or it might be a project team, for example. Or if you are a small organization, then you might just have one team, which could be the whole company. So what you'll see for me in the teams part of teams, I've got a number of teams. I've got a US sales team here. I've got a Mark H project team team. I've got a design team, a communications team. And you can see as you click the little triangle to expand or collapse, it will reveal this sub level underneath. And these are the channels. So teams are made up of channels, which is where the conversations that you have in that team actually happen. And generally, a channel is dedicated to a particular topic. Or if you do just have one great big team for the whole organization, then maybe you would have a, a separate channel for each department or for each project. So it doesn't really matter how you use the hierarchy of teams and then channels. But just be aware that within a team, you have this sub level, which is channels. And generally, a team will be a group of people or a project team. And then these channels will be different topics. So you can see here in, I don't know, let's go to, yeah, this Sales West channel. When I'm clicked on that, it'll show me all of the conversations going on in that channel. You'll see that I can add a reaction to a post that's already there, or I can reply to an existing post or, of course, start a new post. But note that any conversations that are happening in a channel as part of a team will be visible to all of the members of that team. So whatever I post in this Sales West channel, everybody who is a member of the US sales team will get to see it. And if that makes you nervous, if you think to yourself, well, who is in that team? Who is going to see it? Then to see the members of a team, just click on this more options button next to the team there and choose the option to manage team. And then you can see, yes, there are two owners of this particular team. They're the ones that have got superpowers. But if I expand this, then you can see that there are other members of the US sales team as well, including, of course, me and a few other you know, demo accounts there. 
So that's the assumption you should go with. Any post that you put into a channel conversation will be visible to the whole team, except for, let me just find the example I was after, there we go, except for where there's a private channel. So can you see this future plans channel here, which is a channel in the design team, it's got a padlock next to it. That means only a subset of the team members can see that channel. It's a private channel. And we'll talk more about that another time. But if you don't see the padlock, then yes, absolutely, you should assume that everybody who's a member of that team can see that conversation, as opposed to a chat. So if you look on the left hand side there, you can see we've got chats and chats are those conversations that you have with specific people outside of a channel. And you might call this a, a DM, you know, a direct message or a PM, a private message. So you can see here I'm having a chat with Lalo and it's only a chat with Lalo and nobody else. It's a conversation that's happening outside of the channel. And you will also notice that you can do your calling through Teams as well. So again, using the navigation down the left hand side, if I click on calls, and I'm betting that you've had a go at this, or I'm hoping you've had a go at this for internal people to your organization. So if I wanted to have a voice or a video call with Lalo, then I can absolutely do that. And of course, all of this functionality we will look at in more detail as we progress, but just as your quick overview, I could do that. And maybe, just maybe, depending on the licenses that your organization has purchased, maybe you can actually type in a regular telephone number and call it. And if that's the case, then you would actually have a number pad here that you could click the numbers on rather than typing it in like I did. But look, for my demo environment, I can't complete the call because you need a special extra calling license in order to be able to dial regular phone numbers outside of the individuals within your organization. So that will depend on exactly what licenses your organization has purchased. And then finally, you will see the calendar in the navigation bar at the left hand side here. So this is where you'll be scheduling your team's meetings and you'll be joining your team's meetings. And it does synchronize perfectly with your Outlook calendar, but more on that later. So of course, top right hand corner, you'll see I've got the option here to create a brand new Teams meeting. I could do that. Or of course, if I've already got meetings in the calendar, which are online meetings like this weekly call with subsidiary leads here, then of course I can join the Teams meeting from there. But there is more. So we tend to think of Microsoft Teams as being group conversations, you know, channel conversations, private conversations and calling. But we've also got other ways of collaborating. So if in the Mark 8 project team, I go to the research and development channel, what you will see is these different tabs across the top here. So the posts tab, that's where you'll see all of the channel conversations that everybody in the channel can read and contribute to. The next tab along will show you all of the files that have been shared in that channel. But there are other tabs you can add as well. And this is just a couple of examples to give you some ideas. So look at this, I've got spend analysis. If there's a particularly important spreadsheet that everybody in that channel needed regular access to, then you could actually put the Excel spreadsheet using Excel on the web here on a tab in Teams. So we don't even have to, <laughs> we don't even have to leave Teams in order to look at and interact with that spreadsheet. And the next tab along, look, I've got a project plan here. So this is using Microsoft Planner where we can schedule and categorize tasks and even interact with it and assign tasks to people all again within the Teams interface. And if your organization does use things like Power BI, well, again, we can start embedding Power BI reports into Microsoft Teams. Let me just flip to a different page here. I mean, it's amazing. All of this, keep it within Microsoft Teams so the people who need to look at this information can all stay within the same interface. They don't need to remember where these reports live or need different logins or whatever. It's it's all there at their fingertips within the, in this example, the research and development channel. And finally, in this quick tour video, one of the show stopping reasons why people are loving the new teams, myself included, is the ability, look at the top right here, to easily switch between different teams accounts. So you can see that I'm currently showing you my demo account here. You can see the rather long, obscure <laughs> demo tenant address there. That's my demo account that I'm going to be using to show you how this functionality works. But also I'm signed into my live CBT Nuggets account as well at the same time. So I can switch between these accounts and I've got another demo account here and I can add other accounts as well if I need to. And you can set different statuses for your different accounts. So I could set myself as away or do not disturb for my work account so that <laughs> real life colleagues don't try and talk to me while I'm trying to record a demo. Fantastic. 
Oh, but actually, while we are up here at the top right hand corner, if you click on this more button, that's where you can get into settings to control how Teams behaves. And also, if you needed to, for whatever reason, revert back to the classic Teams, then that's where you could switch off the new Teams. Wow, loads of functionality there, all brought together in a single application. It really does make Teams your first port of call for the work that you're doing with your co-workers. And over the next few videos and the next few skills, we're going to learn more. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from CBT Nuggets. Oh, and also, if you're new to IT or are interested in an IT career, visit cbtnuggets.com and sign up for a free, yes, free, a free trial.